When it comes to defying gravity and pushing the boundaries of human capability, these individuals stand in a league of their own. From death-defying leaps off towering skyscrapers to heart-stopping motorcycle stunts, their audacious feats have captured the imagination of audiences worldwide. Let's dive into the 10 most dangerous stunts ever performed, who fearlessly embrace danger in pursuit of adrenaline-fueled thrills. Number 10, Luke Aikens. In 2016, a third-generation skydiver, Luke Aikens, whose grandfather was one of the founding members of the skydiving school, pulled off a stunt on live television that very few people would try without a pistol to their head. He exited a plane without a parachute, 25,000 feet above the California desert. As the cameras were recording, he skillfully aimed his body at a 10,000-foot net that was almost one-third the size of a football field using just the air currents. He executed the move brilliantly, hitting the net squarely on his back. Aiken had experienced danger before. He has completed more than 18,000 jumps, executed risky stunts for blockbuster movies like Iron Man 3, and even served as a safety and training advisor for the United States Parachute Association, where he gave elite military special forces enhanced training. Number nine, Robbie Madison. Motorcycle daredevil Robbie Madison broke the Guinness World Record with a 322-foot jump. One year and one day later, he would pull off an almost unthinkable trick on national television, one that even he admitted he was lucky to escape. He rode his motorcycle down a specially constructed ramp and catapulted it 120 feet, landing just atop the 40-foot wide and 96-foot tall Arc de Triomphe to the cheers of the cheering throng. He wasn't finished. Then he leaped 50 feet onto a ramp that was waiting for him in his bike. The prank seemed to go off without a hitch. However, there was one minor issue. He had to have 10 stitches to repair a gash on his hand that happened during the fall onto the ramp. I've broken my neck, knocked out my teeth, broken my collarbone, punctured my lung, and broken my left wrist twice, Madison said, laughing it off. It resembles a paper cut. Number eight, Alain Robert. If you construct an exceptionally tall structure, Alain Robert, dubbed the French Spider-Man worldwide, is bound to pay you a visit. With just climbing shoes and a bag of chalk, he is renowned for taking on the biggest buildings in the world, including the Sydney Opera House and the Empire State Building. A few days before its official opening in 2004, he managed to climb the Taipei 101, which at the time was the world's tallest structure. Robert didn't let the outrageous skyscraper Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which was depicted in the movie Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, remain unclimbed for long after it was constructed. In 2011, he made the ascent of the tower's face, which ascended over 2,700 feet. It's one of the few climbs he's needed additional gear on, but only because of the tower's top spire, which he couldn't have reached without it. After six hours of climbing, the new tallest skyscraper on Earth has been successfully reached. Naturally, though, Robert continued on. He has climbed nine additional towers in the years that have passed, and the 54-year-old doesn't appear to be planning to quit anytime soon. Number seven, Paul Steiner. With a little assistance from the Red Bull skydiving crew, Austrian skydiver Paul Steiner accomplished one of the most insane mid-air tricks ever attempted in 2010. Their pilots expertly controlled two specially designed gliders so that Steiner could carry out his insane feat which was recorded by cameras positioned throughout the gliders. First, Steiner exited Glider 1's cockpit, made his way to the wing's edge, and took a seat. The second glider passed by below to take him up, and he hung by his hands off the edge of the wing. He moved toward Glider 2's body as Glider 1 turned over and came at him from above. As it approached, Steiner steadied himself and then caught hold of its tail fin to connect the two aircraft. To end, he just skydived to safety after leaping off the glider. Over 100 mph was the average speed at which all of this happened. The Red Bull skydiving staff is prepared to take your call if you feel that standard skydiving isn't risky enough. Number six, Jeff Corliss. Jeff Corliss is arguably the world's best wingsuit pilot. Since it's too risky to do for enjoyment, he views it as his full-time profession, and some of his leaps have really pushed the boundaries. He performed an impressive feat in 2011 by gliding through a 100-foot-wide arch in the midst of Tianmen Mountain, China, a feat that almost no one else, save Corliss, would ever consider. However, he had a mishap. After doing a jump at Table Mountain in South Africa in 2012, his foot caught on a rock and sent him flying into the mountainside. He had a torn ACL and two fractured legs as a result of the tragedy. However, this did not deter him from doing the riskiest jump of his career little over a year later. In October 2013, he piloted his wingsuit through a gap in China's 875-foot Longshan Mountain 
during a break in the sporadic poor weather. Corliss threaded the needle and finished the stunt, despite the narrow crevices 60 feet at its widest point and 15 feet at its narrowest point, as seen in the short film The Flying Dagger. With the incident at Table Mountain still fresh in his mind, he branded the act the most horrific thing he had ever done and declared he would refuse to spend $10 million to repeat it. Number five, Dar Robinson. The late great Burt Reynolds reportedly remarked of stuntman Dar Robinson, Dar had no peer in terms of sheer courage. In a sequence included in Reynolds' 1981 suspense film, Sharky's Machine, Robinson achieved a world record breaking 220 foot freefall drop onto an inflatable mattress. Still, Robinson was unable to stop himself from surpassing the record. There have only been two jumps from Canada's 1,070 foot CN Tower since its construction, both of which were executed by Dar Robinson. Once for the American TV series, That's Incredible, and once more for the $150,000 payoff. At the end of a lackluster Canadian thriller named High Point, he did it. Everything went perfect for the 700-foot freefall, which depended on a secret parachute being released at the last second. Number four, Robbie Knievel. Robbie Knievel is known for his spectacular stunts, and we will talk about his well-known father in a moment. But Robbie, like the comic book Daredevil, is genuinely a man without fear. His greatest accomplishment occurred in 1999 when he managed to surpass his own world record with a breathtaking motorbike jump that was just over 228 feet long. Although this is quite spectacular, there would have been more severe consequences than usual had this jump not gone as planned. He finished the jump over a section of the Grand Canyon and he could have fallen 2,200 feet into the gorge below if he hadn't stuck the landing but he stuck it and still had plenty of space. Unlike his father's most famous jump, Robbie did the jump on a standard 500cc motorcycle, while his father's jump required significantly more specialized equipment. Number three, Evil Knievel. Without a doubt, the most well-known daredevil of all time is Evil Knievel. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, he accomplished over 75 fearless ramp-to-ramp -ramp motorbike jumps captivating the public's attention with his audacious behavior. However, he failed in his most well-known attempt, which was also one of the riskiest acts ever attempted. Evil's 1974 attempt to scale Idaho's Snake River Canyon was among the first events televised for a wide audience. He survived the botched stunt, and since then, a number of daredevils, including his son, have shown interest in pulling off the jump again. Number two, Herbert Nitsch. Although you would think that an airplane pilot might accomplish some kind of amazing aerial stunt, Herbert Nitsch, a pilot for Tyrolean Airways, rose to fame for an underwater stunt. This individual is a free diver who descended 702 feet in a single breath. This stunt was carried out in a location off Betsy's in Greece in 2007. He attempted to run 800 feet a few years ago, but he nearly passed away in the process. He did, however, surpass his own record in 2012, diving to a depth of 831 feet, which keeps him as the world's deepest man. Granted, Nitsch did sustain injuries while breaking his own records, but I imagine he takes pride in the knowledge that no other guy in history has ventured to accomplish what he has. Number one, Eddie Brown. In 2016, when he was younger, professional stuntman Eddie Brown looked up to Evel Knievel, and his tribute act in September 2016 to the hero might be the riskiest stunt ever pulled off. With the Evil Spirit, a specially designed rocket that was almost exactly like the X-2, Brown shot himself at over 400 men per 1,400 feet across the Snake River Canyon. Brown's parachute deployed on time this time, and he made a safe landing on the other side. Although many had discussed it, Brown was the first to try to replicate Knievel's well-known jump, and it's almost miraculous that he succeeded. I feel like the no-name third-string quarterback of a junior varsity team that just won the Super Bowl, he said to the media. I'd like to say that I'm not doing something that Evel Knievel couldn't do, he continued. I'm just bringing his fantasy to a close. With that said, thanks for watching.